There's one Mac which hasn't been updated for a couple of years now, and I'm getting, well, I was getting worried about it. It's not the Mac Pro, by the way. It's, my, it's this one, obviously. I've got a hat on, why have I got a hat on? I freely admit that I was worried about the iMac last year. When you bear in mind that the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, and even the Mac Mini have all received updates to the M2 platform, and this one hasn't, it does make you wonder what on earth Apple is thinking about the future of the iMac. This is the new, we can't really call it new anymore, but this is the updated 24 inch version. It came out in 2021. I've just realized mine needs a proper clean, apologies. It was one of the biggest updates to the iMac for a long, long time. It's got this brand new design, which I absolutely love. It had the M1 chip in it, but that was in 2021, that's two years ago. There's been no M2 or M2 Pro chip put in there, and there's no sign of a replacement for the 27 inch Intel iMac. However, new rumors suggest Suggest that we could be in for an update to this computer this year, which does beg the question, should you buy an M1 iMac now? If you're more of a laptop person than an iMac person, I think you'll love today's sponsor, which is Benx and their fantastic Infinity Max laptop stand. I've been using this with my great big 16 inch MacBook Pro for the last few weeks, and it's wonderful. I love Benx stuff, and this is a great example of, well, how good they are at making accessories for the Mac. It's so sturdy for starters. You can basically shape this pretty much any way you want and it will hold your laptop incredibly securely. And the fact that it quite happily holds this very heavy 16 inch MacBook Pro without any trouble whatsoever is testament to how well Banks make their accessories. It's made from aluminium, it's completely foldable which means you can fold it down and transport it anywhere. And this is what I love about Banks stuff. It looks fantastic, it's very well made, it's very portable, it's even got this fantastic swiveling mechanism on the base of the stand, which means you can very quickly flip around your laptop if you want to show someone something. But what's impressed me the most about the Infinity Max is how sturdy it is. I think this is the sturdiest laptop stand I've ever come across. So to find out more, click the link in the description, and thanks once again to Banks for sponsoring this video. So, Apple rumor expert Mark Gurman tells us in his latest newsletter that one of the most common questions he receives is, when is the new iMac coming out? Well, he can now share some good news, apparently. According to Mark's sources, Apple's next iMac is at an advanced stage of development, which basically means it's entered engineering validation testing, or EVT, which basically means that Apple is putting the production version of the next iMac to task. The downside of that is that that basically means that the latest or the next iMac isn't ready for the public just yet. And German does kind of confirm this. So he says we're probably three months away from seeing them on the shelves or on the Apple store. That means probably a quarter three, maybe even a quarter four release for the next iMac. And if you dig through this rumor, there's not much substance to it really in terms of detail. So there's two machines that Apple is apparently working on, which Mark thinks are iMacs. They're codenamed J433 and J434, and he thinks there'll be a, well, it's obvious, isn't it? There's going to be a new M series chip in these new iMacs to replace the M1 version. Although apparently there's going to be some behind the scenes changes as well, which include reworked internal components and a different manufacturing process for the stand. So basically it's going to look exactly the same and have some new stuff inside. But I do think this is rather exciting news. You see, if I read between the lines of Mark's rumors, I think I know what Apple's up to. I think, and this might be a little bit controversial, you may not disagree. If that's the case, let me know in the comments. But I reckon that the next iMac is going to be one of the first Macs to have the M3 chip. And those two code names, the J3, whatever it was, those two code names suggest we're getting two iMacs. And I think one of them will have the base model M3 chip and the other one will have the M3 Pro. And that would make a lot of sense given the rumored, and I'm sorry to keep referring to rumors, but that's pretty much all we have to go on. In fact, it's all we have to go on at the moment. But according to the rumors, we're gonna be seeing a new version of the MacBook Air, both in 13 inch and and potentially 15 inch guys 
fairly soon, and those machines are expected to have an M3 chip in them. Therefore, it's not much of a stretch to suggest that the next iMac is going to have the M3 chip in it, rather than the M2. Because, as we suspect, the M2 chip is a bit of a stopgap for Apple, and I think we'll see the base model M3 version of this computer probably this summer alongside the new MacBook Air, and then the M3 Pro version of this, I'd guess towards the end of this year with new MacBook Pros, or potentially at the start of 2024. I'm all for this. We don't need any more redesigns for the iMac at the moment. This has been the biggest redesign for a long time, like I mentioned earlier, so that's fine. Leave it as it is. Even with the chin, that's not a big deal. The only other thing I'd love to see is Face ID. It would be great for the iMac to be the first Mac to get Face ID, but I can't see that happening. There is one other thing about this, though, and it does raise quite a big question about the future of the iMac. This is the old and very much loved 27-inch Intel iMac, and if there's one question that I get asked more than any other whenever I cover the iMac, is whether or not we're going to see a Apple silicon-based replacement for this machine. I'm afraid I still can't see that happening. I think Apple's desktop strategy is becoming clearer by the day. I reckon the Mac Studio was a stopgap product. I think Apple has been working out how best to pitch the new Mac Pro, and in the meantime, they gave us the Mac Studio. Similarly, the presence of the M2 Pro-powered Mac Mini does put quite a big question mark over the need for a powerful big iMac, particularly when the studio display exists for those with that budget. Apple seems to be saying if you want a powerful desktop Mac and a fantastic screen, get yourself a Mac Mini with the M2 Pro chip and a studio display. Because combined, the price of those two products isn't that far off the cost of what a big iMac would be. That would be a very expensive machine. We also have no idea how well this one sold. This could have been a bit of a dud as far as Apple was concerned. We don't know how many of the old Intel 27-inch iMac they actually shifted. If it wasn't particularly good from Tim Cook's perspective, then why on earth would you plow loads of development resources, time, money, and marketing into a product that may not do particularly well. But that leaves us with one more question, because all of this stuff is rumor. We don't know if any of it is true. So should you buy a M1 iMac this year? No, I don't think you should. Even if you think you need an iMac right now, the M1 chip inside this computer, although it is still a fantastic chip, is getting a bit long in the tooth, and this computer is really due an update. I do think we'll see a new iMac this year, but as always with Apple, we don't know when that's gonna be, so waiting for it to arrive isn't a good strategy. If you're not that desperate and you can wait, then it's definitely worth doing so because clearly there's a much more powerful version of the iMac on the way. But if you do need a brand new desktop Mac right now for whatever reason, don't buy the M1 iMac. Instead, buy the M2 or the M2 Pro Mac Mini. And yes, you might have to forego the fantastic Retina iMac screen if you do that, unless you can stretch to the studio display, which is worth it if you can. But even if you can't, you can get some fantastic monitors to go with that Mac Mini. The power that you get pound for pound from the Mac Mini is completely unbeatable. And if your budget can stretch, I would really recommend going for the M2 Pro version. And to find out why, keep watching for a link to a video I did recently where I put the M2 Pro Mac Mini through its paces with music production. The results were absolutely mind-boggling.